Hello students, today I am going to give a lecture on modules of fractions. In the last lecture, we have discussed about rings of fractions. On the same lines, we will discuss about construction of modules of fractions. And in this lecture, we will also uh, discuss about universal property of modules of fractions. So, let us start with the construction of module of fractions. Suppose R is a commutative ring with 1 and M is any R module. Suppose S is a multiplicatively closed subset of R and suppose 1 belongs to S. Then we consider a set M cross S and we define a relation tilde on M cross S as follows. Take two elements of M cross S, MD and NE. So we say that these two elements are related through this relation if and only if ME minus DN is killed by some element x in s. So two elements of m cross s are related through this relation. Now it is very easy to see that this is an equivalence relation. So if this is an equivalence relation on m cross s, we can talk of equivalence classes. So let m by d denote the equivalence class of element m d in m cross s. So thus m by d is the set of all those elements n e in M cross S such that MD is related with NE. So we consider the set of all equivalence classes of M cross S under this relation tilde and we denote this set by S inverse M. Now we will give this set an S inverse R module structure as follows. We define the addition of two elements in S inverse M as this M by D plus N by E is M E plus N D by D E and action of S inverse R on S inverse M is defined as take an element R by D dash of S inverse R and M by D of S inverse M. So we define the action as R M by D D dash. So it is easy to see that S inverse M becomes S inverse R module under these two operations. So this S inverse M is called module of fractions of module M or localization of M at S. Now, it can be seen easily that S inverse M is also R module under the action of R on S inverse M as this. Take an element R in R and M by D d by m in s inverse m so we define this as r d by m so s inverse m is r module as well as s inverse r module now it can be seen easily that there is a natural r linear map from m to s inverse m now see s inverse m is also r module so we define a map from m to s inverse m as pi m m is equal to m by 1 now this is our linear map. This can be seen very easily. Now, next comes this definition. Suppose M is R module, then we say that an element A in R is a unit on M if the map from M to M defined by X going to AX is isomorphism of R modules. So A in R is called a unit on M if f a x equal to a x is isomorphism of r modules. Now, we have seen this a natural homomorphism from m to s inverse m. Now, it can be observed that for any element s in s, pi m s is a unit on s inverse m. That is, a map from s inverse m to s inverse m defined by the multiplication of s by 1 is isomorphism of s inverse r modules. So this can be seen easily. So this is linear map. We can see fs of m by d plus m dash by d dash turns out to be fs m by d plus fs m dash by d dash and fs r by s dash m by d is equal to r by s dash fs m by d. So the fs is s inverse r linear. Now to show that pi m this fs pi m s is unit on s inverse m, we need to show that fs is 1 1 as well as on 2. 
So let us see that Fs is 1, 1. So take an element m by d in kernel of Fs. That is Fs m by d is 0 of S inverse m. So Fs m by d is ms by d. So this is 0 over 1. This means that ms is killed by some element t in s that is mst is 0. Now consider the element m by d. m by d will be equal to mst by dst. So this will be 0 by dst that is the element m by d is 0 of s inverse m. So therefore kernel of fs is just 0 that is fs is 1 1. Now next we try to prove that fs is on to so we take an arbitrary element in S inverse M. So M by D can be written as MS by ST. So this will be S by 1 into M by ST. So S is in S, D is in S, so SD is in S. So this will be FS M by ST. So pre-image of any arbitrary element M by D in S inverse M is M by ST. So therefore FS is on to. So thus, pi ms, which is equal to s by 1, is unit on s inverse m for every element s in s. Now, with the help of this property, we, we are now able to define universal property on s inverse m. So, given R linear map f from m to n, where m is R module, n is R as well as s inverse R module. So, there is our linear map f from m to n. So there will exist unique s inverse r linear map from s inverse m to n such that f is equal to f dash pi m where pi m is a natural homomorphism from m to s inverse m. So we need to find a map from s inverse m to n which is s inverse r linear and which satisfies this property. So we consider a map f dash from s inverse m to n and we define it as f dash m by s is equal to 1 by s f of m. Now see, f of m belongs to n and n is s inverse r module. So this makes sense, 1 by s into f. Now need to show that <coughs> f dash is s inverse r linear. So this is a very trivial exercise. It can be shown easily that f dash is s inverse r linear. Now, f dash pi m of m will be equal to 1 by 1 f of m because it will be f dash m by 1. So, it will be 1 by 1 f of m which is equal to f of m. So, f is equal to f dash pi m. Uniqueness of this map can be shown similarly. So, thus, if f is R linear map from M to N where M is R module and N is R as well as S inverse R module then there exist unique S inverse R linear map from S inverse M to N such that it satisfies this property. With the help of this let us try to prove the next result. Suppose S is multiplicatively closed subset of ring R and M and N be R modules. And suppose f is r linear map from m to n, that is f belongs to whom m and r. Now, consider pi n. Now, pi n will be a, a natural homomorphism from n to s inverse n. And we compose it by f with f. So, pi n f will be a map from m to s inverse n. Now, pi n f will be s inverse r linear map. So, sorry, pi and f will be R linear map. So, by universal property, we get that there exists unique S inverse R linear map from S inverse M to S inverse N such that pi and f is equal to f dash pi m. So, that means any homomorphism between M and N gives a homomorphism from S inverse M to S inverse N. So we will denote this homomorphism S inverse M to S inverse N by S inverse F and S inverse F is defined as S inverse F of M by S is equal to F M by S. So now the next theorem says that the map 
S inverse from home M n to home S inverse M S inverse N is our linear map. And secondly, that if M dash to M to M double dash is exact sequence of R modules, then the resulting sequence obtained by applying operation S inverse, that is S inverse M dash to S inverse M to S inverse M double dash is exact sequence of S inverse R modules. So first of all, we will prove one. Now, in the previous theorem, we have seen that if F belongs to home M and R, then S inverse F belongs to home S inverse M S inverse N. Now we need to show that it is R linear. So let Fg belong to home MR, MNR. Then F plus G also belongs to home MNR. So S inverse and F plus G M is F of M plus G of M. Now S inverse F plus G of M by S will be F plus G M by S. So it will be FM <clears throat> by S plus G M by S. So this will be S inverse F plus S inverse G. Similarly, S inverse of R F will be R S inverse F. So thus, S inverse F, S inverse is R linear map. Now, now we have to show that uh, exact sequences of R modules <coughs> translate to exact sequence of S inverse R modules if we apply operation S inverse. Now, first observe this fact. Suppose F is R linear map from M dash to M and G is R linear map from M to M double dash. Then S inverse of G composed with F is composition of S inverse G and S inverse F. Now, suppose this is exact sequence of R modules M dash to M to M double dash. So this means G composed with F is equal to zero. So thus, S inverse G composed with F is also 0. So this means S inverse G composed with S inverse F is 0. So this means image, uh, this is equal to 0. Now, okay, now since this is a sequence of R modules, so this will be a sequence of S inverse R modules. If 1 is exact, we need to show that 3 is exact. So, now we have shown that S inverse G composed with S inverse F is 0. So, this means image S inverse F is contained in kernel S inverse G. Now, to show that 3 is exact sequence, we need to prove that kernel of S inverse G is contained in image S inverse F. So, let us take an element X by S in kernel S inverse G. This means S inverse G X by S is 0 by 1. That is G X by S is equal to 0 by 1. That means there exists some element T in S such that T into G X is 0. But since G is R linear map and T is in S, so T is in R. So we get that G of T X is equal to 0. That is T X belongs to kernel G. But kernel G is equal to image F. <coughs> so Tx will be equal to f m dash for some m dash in m. So now <coughs> x by s we can write it as Tx by Ts which is equal to f m dash by Ts which is equal to s inverse f m dash by Ts. So thus we have written x by s as s inverse f of some element. So that means this belongs to image of s inverse f. That So thus kernel of S inverse G is contained in image S inverse F. So therefore, 3 is exact. So thus, by applying this S inverse, exact sequences translate to exact sequences. So its corollary is, if we have short exact sequence of our mod modules, then by applying S inverse to this uh, short exact sequence, we will get again a short exact sequence of S inverse R modules. Now, so in particular, we can say that if N is sub module of R module M, then 
this sequence 0 to s inverse n to z to s inverse m to s inverse m mod n to 0 is exact. Now, since n is submodule of m, so we have the exact sequence 0 to n to m to m mod n to 0, where i is the inclusion map from n to m and p is the projection map from m to m mod n given by px is equal to x plus n. So, clearly i is 1, 1 and p is on 2. <clears throat> so, therefore, this is ex uh, uh, okay. If we show that image i is equal to kernel p, then this will be exact sequence. Now, see image i is clearly n because i is inclusion map and kernel of p is n. So, image i is kernel p. So, this is exact sequence. So, therefore, by corollary 1, we have exact sequence 0 to s inverse n to s inverse m to s inverse m mod n to 0. <coughs> now, we have some properties of <coughs> functor s inverse. Suppose n and l are submodules of r module m and i and j be ideals of r. Then we have the following results. s inverse commutes with the intersection of submodules. S inverse commutes with the sum of submodules. S inverse i n is equal to S inverse i into S inverse n. S inverse i j is equal to S inverse i into S inverse j. And S inverse m mod n is isomorphic to S inverse m mod S inverse n. So these are very trivial properties to check. So these can be left as an exercise for you people. Thank you.